Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India morning and welcome to the course introduction to interaction design. So, in the last uh, lecture we had seen that how with an example of a case study that how from the problem to the solution uh, phase that uh, with using the double diamond technique how we can uh, uh, identify the problem and then solve it and how we can design various uh, elements for example, logo how can we uh, fix the uh, typography and other such basic color theme etcetera. So, today's uh, lecture we will see the affordances and UI transformations. So, affordance uh, means that how the product or uh, maybe an interface is communicating to the user. So, if we take an example of a tangible product we can uh, say that maybe this pen uh, the way it is designed it, it can be held by the user or for example, a bottle uh, the cap needs to be rotated to open or whether it is a flip top. So, with the other helpful elements like color, uh, contrast and other such things we can inform the user in a efficient manner that how the product has to be used. So, similarly in the digital media also how the uh, screen is communicating uh, with the user. So, that has to be designed so that there is no uh, you know miscommunication and the user uh, does not have a high cognitive load on him and he or she is able to take their uh, activities to uh, fruition. So, now there are several types of affordances, explicit affordances, hidden, pattern, metaphorical, uh, false and negative affordances. So, we will take a look at all of them quickly. So, the explicit affordances are which are very clear in communicating with the user that how it is to be operated. So, when we see a button may be saying the word start. So, of course, uh, it means that one has to press it to start or here we can see that slide to unlock and with the help of the arrow also. So, there is another helpful hint to the user that in which direction it needs to be slid in order to start or unlock. The other is the hidden affordances. Now, these affordances are not explicit, they are not uh, out there in the open. So, the user needs to hover in the certain area or uh, move the mouse or click somewhere so that the other options will open up. So, here uh, this is an example of when the user is required to unlock the phone with the swipe up gesture. Uh, pattern affordances are something that we are used to seeing around us. So, something that forms a pattern in the mind of the user. So, uh, repeated you know interaction or uh, looking at it or seeing it or experiencing it sort of embeds that into our system. So, here is an example of a camera where we know that when we hold a camera where will be the click button? It will be on the right side, it will have a certain you know design certain uh, pattern on it texture. So, we can identify it quickly. Metaphorical affordances are which uh, we relate with an imagery or uh, of a real or original object. So, for example, when we are purchasing something online, so we place them in a cart. So, when we see a cart we think of it uh, when we interact with a real cart in a real grocery store or any other shopping uh, location. Now, false affordances are when, when the action that the user is thinking will be performed or does not uh, perform. So, it uh, suggests a use, but it is unable to actually perform that particular function. So, for example, here is a dummy uh, button and we can see that there is no indication on it like some like similar to the other buttons here we can see uh, some illustrations, but there is no uh, icon or no other information on this button to suggest that it is a working button. So, this is an example of false affordances 
And then we have negative affordances and these are used when we need to convey a lack of function or interactivity. So, for example, uh, when we see a button like this which is grey and appears ghosted. So, it means that we understand from this button that there is certain step that we may have missed if we are for example, filling up a form and unless we put in that information this button will not uh, be enabled and once uh, the form is filled then the button uh, becomes live and then we can perform our particular action. So, affordances in UX design we have certain uh, elements like buttons. So, these are the core uh, elements uh, which suggest interactivity in the interface and they are uh, easy to accidentally create which may communicate to the user that it is not clickable. So, we have to be careful about that, that we do not create give the illusion of a false affordance. The next is the uh, animation. So, animated uh, affordances generally imitate actions or movements in the real world and here actions like swiping, pushing, pulling, dragging etcetera these are uh, carried out and we can have very simple animations to very complex animations and we will see some of these in the later slides. Now, an example of animation is a simple example is a toggle button. So, they show user when something is on or off. So, so for example, we have this and when we uh, swipe it. So, this informs the user that it is now on or off. Now, notifications uh, help draw the user's attention to something or which also helps in indicating the change, any kind of change. So, uh, on a phone for example, there are certain notifications that keep arriving when we receive a message or a missed call. So, that uh, help us see that what have we missed and uh, it draws our attention. So, even if the phone is on silent, we can still uh, see that a notification has arrived and if it is important, then we will take it up, right. Now, input fields. So, input fields help in the user that where the data needs to be entered. So, they are generally conveyed by the shape of the field and the contrast between the object or the uh, foreground and the background. So, now here we can see a few examples that how the input fields are there and with the help of like especially here with the green tick, the user knows that the right uh, term has been entered here. Now, icons are we see icons on a daily basis and they rely on a pattern or metaphorical affordance. So, they just like the cart uh, that we saw the shopping cart. Similarly, we have other icons we have discussed icons also in the previous few lectures where they uh, resemble something that exists uh, in reality, but of course, some icons like the save button save icon which is a floppy disk. We may not have seen it some of you may not have seen it, but still we associate it with saving a certain document. Now, uh, photos they are quick visual cues and they help the user figure out that what is to be done with the product. So, they give sort of a little tour to the user, so that they are able to carry on the function efficiently. Now, we will uh, take a look at animation in the user interface. So, animation uh, broadly means moving from one state to the other. So, how something uh, will change its position or form or some other attributes depending on what we are trying to communicate to the user. Now, it has several advantages. So, one is to communicate the ideas. So, when we have stakeholders, we have a team uh, design team, we also have clients. So, this animation helps in communicating the idea in a very uh, easy simplified manner. The next is standing out, which means that when we have to for example, it could be any situation, but if we are preparing something for a client. So, it creates sort of a wow factor for the client, because uh, we all expect a static uh, 
you know interface, but when something uh, moves around, something is easy to see, something is also uh, you know pleasing to our eyes, then it creates a wow factor, especially when some very interesting transformations are happening in front of us. Delight users, so it helps the users interact better with the system, they, it helps them to remember the particular functions or the steps and also it gives them a very immersive uh, experience. So, that is something that the users uh, like and to push design forward in order to make the design better and further better, the we have to customize the experience, we have to keep on working on customizing the experience because certain animation over and over also will lose its charm at some point. And there are some other important uh, aspects like how much to use the animation or how little or more. So, the, all those things also we will discuss. Now, let us see some of the motion types. So, the first is the functional motion. So, we can see that functional motion allows the user to get something done. So, for example, the drag and uh, drop motions or when we have the hover and then we click. Now, here we can see a very simple animation and you will notice that there are two, three functions here. So, it starts with the uh, download uh, button and when the user clicks, so some animation happens and then it says open. So, we are not looking somewhere else when we are uh, pressing download and we are not looking at some other space when we have to open it. So, in the same space itself, the same space has been utilized to press for download and to press the same place for open. So, we can see that how we have utilized the, the real state of the digital space. Now, this is another example that how when we hover in this particular uh, website here, that how the, the visual changes in front of us, how it sort of dissolves. So, creates an interesting uh, little animation. Then next is the structural uh, motion. Now, structural motion uh, derives uh, basically it is um, you know inspiration from the Google materials, because when they came out, so they sort of provided a nice uh, base for the same. So, how they structure their UI. So, uh, Google does it very well and here we can see that some of the ways that we have the structural motion incorporated in our work, we can see when elements move on and off or the or elements grow or shrink, but when they grow, so they we get to see some detail and uh, there are drop downs and then there is this uh, parallax uh, animation. Parallax is uh, for example, when we are uh, traveling in a train, so how things recede in the background. So, what is in the foreground, background, so a, a feeling of depth also. So, here we can see that how the Google Translate is uh, with the help of this animation, it is communicating the translated text. And the other uh, interesting feature here is also of accessibility, accessibility and also uh, the gender uh, uh, response in the sense that the doctor is he and she. So, it is sort of giving both the answers, it is keeping that uh, aspect also uh, in its mind. So, this is also another example that how the animation, uh, all the parts here actually are working they are they are being animated and they are disappearing and then all of them are appearing. So, it creates a very eye grabbing sort of animation for the user. Now, emotional uh, motion is uh, which involves the emotions of the user. So, it is also usable, it is also uh, efficient at the same time it is it is also making or giving sort of an emotional experience to the user. So, now there are some uh, ways in which it is used like where we have character and illustration animations or when we have certain uh, success or failure states. So, how the users uh, emotions are still being 
acknowledged. So, we have discussed earlier as well in a lecture that how to communicate rather than writing 404 error, how can the business communicate to the user that it is not their fault, but the business's fault uh, rather. So, that the user is not offended or is not you know uh, negatively impacted by the communication. And here we can see that when in this uh, particular animation that when the user books a flight, so how it actually shows the user that where their seat will be. So, the user can uh, or the one who is booking the flight gets that feeling that when they will be actually uh, traveling and uh, it may sort of bring out very uh, positive emotions in them. This is another example where we can see that when the uh, we see the register uh, page. So, the fisherman is sitting and waiting to bait the fish, but when the person logs in here. So, now he is standing upright and he is smiling and he has a fish in his hand. So, this is also uh, communicating that uh, how he is happy when they have logged in to this particular website. Uh, this is uh, another example of when uh, we have the error message 404 and how the business can sort of you know turn it into a better or a little positive experience for the user. Now, there are four, uh, four ways in which this uh, animation or this uh, transformation can be used. So, now first is the uh, interaction trigger. So, it needs to be seen that how is the animation being caused. So, are we using a mouse to move around or like we saw earlier that hover over an image so that the animation begins or do we have to tap, swipe. So, what kind of action do we have to take? The next is that how do elements react? So, what really happens in the animation? So, are they decreasing, increasing in size, they are flipping, turning, rotating. So, what exactly is happening or the color changing? So, all those needs uh, to be thought of. And uh, timing is uh, very important when it comes to uh, animation that how for how long should the animation stay over. Like for example, when we are using the hover feature, then how long should it take before the animation appears. So, generally as a, a rule of thumb, one can say that maybe 300 milliseconds is a good time for the user not to really lose interest because we all have a very short attention span as well and at the same time the cognitive load which we are hoping that the animation will uh, decrease on us. So, if the wait time is too much, so it may you know result in more uh, anticipation and more uh, uh, cognitive load. And then uh, delay is another important factor here that how long after we trigger will the animation begin. So, all these uh, timing related po uh, points are very important to consider. Then easing is basically you can consider it to be the physics of animation that how does it work. So, the smoothness of it and the seamlessness of the animation. So, is it jerky, is it entering from somewhere at a certain uh, pace and just disappearing somewhere else or whether it is easing into the space and the user is getting a positive experience or the jerkiness or the artificialness of it is providing a poor experience. So, we also have to ensure that when we are using the animation, it is also to look very natural to the user when they are interacting. So, here we can see that this is an app to do with money, but how with the help of interesting color, a color palette, mood board the and the animations that how it has become a very positive looking application which the user would want to interact with. And also note the time in which the interactions uh, once after interacting after triggering the animation is taking place. So, there is uh, the delay uh, becomes really important. Now, another way of animation is the staggering effect. So, here we can see that how the image is appearing and disappearing and it is staggering vertically. So, this is 
providing a fluidity to the particular uh, image which is to do with nature here in this particular example and so it gives a very uh, organic and a very natural uh, flow to the image. So, uh, the idea is communicated better when we use a staggered animation in this particular case. So, uh, when we talk about easing, so the timing is very important. So, there are four ways in which we can uh, determine this particular time and how the animation is entering or exiting the field of view. So, one is the linear motion. So, uh, this is used quite rarely as compared to the other methods because generally there is uh, not many animations that have a very linear flow unlike music. So, it is used in very certain cases. Next, we have the accelerate. So, we are we use this when the object is leaving the, the field. So, when we have an animation and now it has to go out of the space. So, we use this accelerate. So, it uh, moves quickly. Ease both is when it starts slow, picks up speed and then ends slow or starts fast, slows down and then again becomes fast. So, that is when ease uh, both is used and then uh, deaccelerate is the opposite of accelerate. So, we use this when they enter the field. So, they start uh, fast and then they sort of slow down. So, they enter the field more smoothly and then the elastic or spring. So, this is when you may have seen for example, a ball falling and then come to a stop. So, this is that elastic elasticness and it is sort of a fun way of expressing the uh, particular experience, but we have to be careful that the elastic or the spring motion should not be used too much because it can get a little monotonous and repetitive and boring for the user. So, this is an example, two examples here. So, maybe you can uh, try and figure out that which one is which out of the four that I have shown earlier that which is linear, accelerate, deaccelerate, which one is it. So, this is an example here we can see a good way to portray the animation and a poor way. So, we can see that how in the poor there is sort of a time lag how the delay is happening that it is very you know uh, very choppy the way it is the next block is coming into the view it is very choppy whereas on the left side the blue one the good example how the transition is smooth the animation is smooth. So, it is not uh, creating any type of a uh, uh, pressure or force on the eyes and it is also very uh, real life like. So, the animation can also help us create a uh, depth. So, how the you see how they are moving around. So, they are appearing from the back. So, this sort of creates the depth in the 2D uh, space. There are many other ways in which we can create the feeling of uh, depth in uh, other examples. Now, uh, UI animations they involve incorporating movement into the user interface elements and this helps to elevate the interactivity and overall quality of a product. So, the user gets a better uh, experience and the overall quality of the product and the way the uh, interactivity uh, is taking place is also improved. Now, there is a, a bit of a difference between animation and the motion graphics. So, animation is a broader uh, concept which encompasses the application of movement of the uh, visual elements. So, we associate it commonly with uh, the UX and UI design and it also has other applications in other areas like film, uh, gaming, uh, VR. So, all these techniques also take help from this particular concept. Then uh, motion graphics generally involve infusing motion into a graphic design components. So, we can think of the motion graphics as a subhead or a subset of the animation. So, the UI animation like uh, we have seen earlier also that how it can create an immersive experience for the user. So, it, it imitates the sensation of engaging with a tangible object in the physical realm and 
uh, animation becomes very important for the user because they can connect better with the product, they feel more connected because now we are communicating the information better, we are also trying to connect them emotionally with the particular uh, product through the help of the animation. So, let us see some of the different types of UI animations. So, there are micro uh, uh, interactions. Now, these micro interactions they have been used in a wide uh, variety uh, of ways in the digital interfaces. So, some of the simple ones are here we can see that pressing a button or uh, this uh, switching the button on off button. So, they provide a visual feedback to the user and they inform whether the action that the user took was successful or unsuccessful. And uh, users are also helped in comprehending and visualizing the outcomes of their interactions. So, if a button says on, so now we know that once it has moved to a green state, so it is on. So, that means, you know, the interface is ready for further exploration. Similarly, for example, here ticking of the box that okay, this choice has been recorded by the system. Then loading and uh, progress. So, there are lot of uh, different functions that require loading time. So, the software may take some time or even the submission of some form may take some time. So, how can this be made a little bit more cheerful, little bit more positive for the user? So, for the, this we have all these ways in which the loading and progress can be tracked by the user. So, we had seen this in lecture number uh, 17 as well, where we saw whether it can be a linear way to show the progress or a circular way and we should maintain the same style throughout our design. So, so if we are using linear, then we should uh, use linear throughout and not mix and match with the others. So, so, this makes it a little bit more playful, uh, the user can bear to wait for a few more uh, minutes, seconds, just enjoying the animation. Then we have the uh, navigation. So, these are also very important in guiding the user uh, through the interface and especially when we have, uh, you know, websites or interfaces that are very complex. So, these animations allow the user to navigate in a more efficient manner. So, animations also help in storytelling and uh, branding because they are very efficient uh, in grabbing the attention of the user and they if used judiciously can uh, also communicate the brand elements and uh, they can uh, present the product in a very engaging manner which can also be very entertaining for the uh, viewer. So, we can see some of these examples here that how the uh, Google with the, the colors, how it is this animation, little animation is uh, interesting because we are waiting for what will happen next, what will, uh, what will it turn into. So, that anticipation is there. And also the, when the logo is animated, so there is a combination of uh, storytelling and uh, branding. So, now we, we uh, connect these certain colors with Google or we connect certain colors with Coca Cola. So, when uh, this uh, these colors are used and this along with the animation. So, there is storytelling because something is flipping, something is moving at the same time. Uh, we know that this is a certain brand because the communication is happening. Now, certain uh, UI animation principles like squash and uh, stretch. So, they change their shape uh, when they are interacting with other objects like this ball is uh, bouncing. So, it is not changing its uh, form, it is getting squashed, but it is again uh, springing up or anticipation. So, some micro animations they cause a feeling of anticipation like we saw in the previous slide also that we are waiting, the user is waiting for what will uh, happen. Here also we can see in this particular example that we are sort of waiting that what happens when this person pulls it, will it come out or not or many other feelings may be generated. Then staging is that how uh, we organize and arrange the elements strat uh, strategically 
to guide the users towards specific actions or buttons. So, there is certain research which is also involved in this particular stage and uh, this is also another uh, important principle of the UI animations. Now, there are some other types of uh, actions like follow through and overlapping. So, the uh, elements can show a natural movement by have you know by having different speeds and overshooting their action uh, before uh, settling uh, down. So, we have seen one example, we have seen one way which is easing at how a gradual and smooth motion is uh, uh, you know sort of replicates a real life motion that somebody is running and then comes to a stop for example. So, it gives a very natural experience to the user. The other is uh, the arc. So, where we use certain paths in the field for the animation to uh, move around. So, now if this is our field then one arc can can be like this and the other arc can also be like this. So, the item or the object which is originally here now it moves along this arc and then it moves along this arc. So, which is better because we have to ensure that although animation is a very uh, a positive uh, experience giving a little trick, but we should not also use it too much or in order to just create something really interesting, we can actually overload the user with what is in front of them. So, we have to use it very uh, uh, judiciously. Now, secondary action. So, secondary action is like you know pulsing buttons. So, they add visual interest. Uh, so, something is pulsing on the side. So, we know maybe some action is pending or our attention is required. So, that is a secondary action. Uh, timing we have discussed that how timing is uh, important and uh, uh, timing has to be carefully selected. If it is too slow, it uh, becomes rather boring for the user or the viewer. If it is too fast, then one can miss some important details. So, one has to be very careful that what is the time for the trigger and how long or for du the duration for which the animation should last. Now, exaggeration is like I mentioned that sometimes one may exaggerate too much in the uh, space. So, when maybe too much of uh, animation is used or every element is being animated. So, one has to be you know sure that we are not over exaggerating, but just using it where it is really required. Uh, next is the appeal. So, one needs to spend a little time to come up with visually appealing animations. So, even if they are, they are micro animations, so using the right color, using the right uh, design, the shape, the size the roundness or the sharpness. So, all of those aspects need to be given some time to sort of create the design language of our application or the website. And then solid drawing and straight ahead versus the pose to pose. So, in solid drawing and straight ahead is where we are starting with one particular state and then with we are making the all the steps which are required to reach the final stage. And the pose to pose is that when we know that what is the first initial stage and where do we want to land and then we design the ones in between. So, these two strategies can be used uh, depending on the situation. So, the second one which is pose to pose it allows uh, the designer to sort of uh, take care of the timing in between or also to see that which is important what can be discarded which is not really possible in the solid drawing and straight ahead uh, principle. So, uh, there are several tools for UI designers that they can uh, take advantage of like Adobe After Effects, uh, Motion UI and Flinto. So, these are prototyping animation uh, tools. So, which are uh, very easy uh, you know in terms of accessibility and learning, quick learning, memorability. So, they are very easy tools and helpful tools for the users. Now, application of uh, user uh, of UI animation. So, there are uh, several applications. Let us quickly take a look at all of them. So, launch screen animation is that when uh, the uh, brand 
wants to enhance the brand recognition. So, on the launch screen we have a certain animation, maybe it talks about sale, maybe it talks about price drop or something like that or some other special feature they want to highlight. Then the onboarding tour animation is when the app has been installed and the user is now interacting with the application. So, engaging animations can be very uh, helpful and crucial in the interaction between both the application and the user. And we have also discussed earlier that at what rate people are downloading applications and then deleting applications because there, there are just so many applications available nowadays. It is a very fast quick uh, way to uh, create these applications, but some of them fail because of certain reasons uh, like poor animations or maybe poor interaction. So, we have to be careful when we are designing that the onboarding experience should also be positive. So, it is not just grabbing the user, but also maintaining the, the followership of the user. Then we come to login screen animation. So, we have to ensure that our color scheme, our uh, mood board, uh, the mascot if we are using any. So, they all have to align with our the brand. So, uh, we have to set a certain mood and we have to avoid distracting users from the main objective of the conversion. So, some of these points are important when it is uh, the login page we are dealing with. Then explainer animations are which sort of break down the content and it makes it into smaller uh, uh, packets. So, it is easy for the user to understand and digest. It also gives a more user friendly alternative to the lengthy blocks of the text. So, it helps communicate the information much more playfully and more easily. Then we have icon uh, animations. So, these are important elements of the uh, UI foundation which help the intuitive navigation within the mobile apps. Uh, with this, we will come to the end of today's uh, lecture. So, we covered the topic of affordances and also the uh, UI animations and transformations that how they can enhance the experience of the user, provide more immersive experience and help them remember the steps probably in a better manner for longer duration. So, we will stop here today. In the next lecture, uh, we will be looking at how to structure our particular project. So, we will also take inspiration from atomic design and we will see that what are the different stages uh, of work and how they will help us to create a better final product. So, see you in the next class. Thank you.